Dear students, in this screencast lecture, we are going to see importance of ATP, how ATP is used as an energy currency, what are the ways in which ATP is manufactured there in the cell, what are the uses of the ATP based energy there in the cell system. ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. So, it serves as an energy currency of the cells. Cells use their supply of ATP to power almost every energy requiring process in their cell. It starts from making sugars to supplying activation energy for the enzymes in certain chemical reactions. It is also involved in transporting substances across the membranes and they help in the movement of the cell itself that is in the motility of the organism when they are growing in the environment. Now we look at the point how they are synthesis. ATP is synthesized from ADP using energy from photosynthesis. It is called as a photophosphorylation way of ATP synthesis. It consists of again cyclic and non-cyclic photophosphorylation process which would be commonly operating there in the aerobic and anaerobic photoautotrophic organism. And then comes the aerobic respiration and even an anaerobic respiration the ATP is synthesized there by the mechanism of oxidative phosphorylation and in the fermentation as well as in the operation of process like glycolysis and even in some steps of TCA cycle, substrate level phosphorylation is the process by which ATP is formed inside the cell. In a nutshell, ATP could be synthesized by aerobic respiration, anaerobic respiration, fermentation as well as by photosynthesis. Here by photosynthesis is called as photophosphorylation, by fermentation it is commonly referred as a substrate level phosphorylation, aerobic respiration, anaerobic respiration is the one in which it is produced by oxidative phosphorylation. The process is mediated by addition of inorganic phosphate is added to adenosine diphosphate with the help of ATP synthase enzyme and ATP is formed. This ATP is employed for various work such as a chemical work transport and even mechanical work inside the cells. Now, we look at the structure of the ATP molecule. It is a nucleotide composed of three smaller components. The first one is a 5 carbon sugar which is commonly made up of ribose which serves as a backbone to which the other two subunits are attached. One is adenine that is a double ringed nitrogenous molecule and the third component is a triphosphate molecule that is three phosphate have been attached to that. Next we look at the points that how ATP storing energy there in the cell. Key for this lies with the triphosphate group that have been attached there to the sugar molecule. The phosphate groups are highly negatively charged so they ripple one another strongly. This causes an electrostatic repulsion between the charged phosphate groups. The two covalent bonds joining the phosphates are unstable. Thus, the unstable bonds holding the phosphates together in the ATP molecule will be commonly having a low activation energy. As a result, when it is hydrolyzed, both these anhydride bond containing phosphate molecules will be easily hydrolyzed and they will be releasing the energy. In general, cell typically use the compounds as energy currencies only when the change in the free energy of hydrolysis is greater than that of 30 kilojoules per mole. So, if you look at when these two anhydride bonds when they are hydrolyzed significant amount of energy could be derived there and it can be used for the other process. That is the reason why these two bonds are high energy containing anhydride bonds whereas if you look at the last bond there, that is the last phosphate molecule there, which is bonded by an insignificant energy containing ester bond. As a result, when it is hydrolyzed, it will be releasing a very less amount of energy, which may not be significant to act as an energy currency of the cell. Thus, the energy released during the hydrolysis of ATP and ADP will be significant quantity of energy for the cell. Whereas, the third bond when hydrolysis it releasing a very meager energy. Next we look at the points that how ATP powers the energy requiring reactions inside the cells. Cells use ATP to drive endergonic reaction. Such reaction do not proceed spontaneously because their product possess more free energy than their reactants. However, 
if the cleavage of atp's terminal high energy bond is happening it releases more energy than that of the other reaction that consumes the energy so the overall energy change of the two coupled reaction will be exergonic and thus they will both proceed there inside the cell because almost all endergonic reactions require lesser energy than it is released by the cleavage of atp atp is serving as an excellent molecule to provide most of the energy need of the cells however the problem there with the atp is its storage it's the instability of its phosphate bonds makes it vulnerable to be get stored for a long term energy storage molecule so in this case fats or carbohydrates serves as an energy storage for a longer time period